Welcome to the podcast. Young in love. Hello people. This is another episode of Young in Love podcast and you are highly welcome if you're joining us for the first time. If you're new to this podcast, I love you already. On today's episode, we're going to be discussing something very sensitive and um I captioned this episode I'm visiting. So what? That's a question for you to answer by the time we're done with our discussion. On today's episode, I have a very vibrant young man with me and he is Kenny. Kenny say hi. Hi everyone out there listening. Uh good to be here. <laughs> yes. Thank you for being here. Oh, uh, we're going to start immediately. We're going to be talking about this thing from the perspective of a home date. Do you care to tell us what a home date is? A home date would qualify as uh a girl or a guy inviting the guy or girl or <laughs> you know whatever their preference is. Yes. to come over and spend some time at, at home at home yeah right most likely for one reason or the other which might or um, might not be <laughs> specified before arranging the dates yeah okay do you think it's safe do you think home dates are safe so generally it's it's something to be careful about because for the first time you're going into on chatter territory mm-hmm. you you might want to be sure you already know this person who is inviting you over before going to the person's house okay so you're saying that home date is safe when you know the person who you're visiting yes that's what i think okay uh, would you recommend a home date like if you had a younger sister or a girlfriend or anyone would you recommend a home date i i definitely would and i'm going to give some trust to the good guys or the good ladies out there are you a good guy <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I'll say I'm a good guy. I, I don't know who else would say they are not. I mean, like I know you're married now, but before you got married, did you have a girlfriend visit you at home? Yes, several times. Okay. Girlfriends, <laughs> non-girlfriends. Uh, how how visits. did you manage expectations? Like when they visited, was there a time where you felt like they are visiting men that they wanted something, something sexual? Okay, so generally I would only invite people that I felt comfortable with, you know, people who like I comfortable, felt Like what do you mean? Uh that I was close to them, I had good rapport with them, I was good talking to them. Yeah. And when I had expectations, mm-hmm. you know, like based on chemistry or yes. the attractiveness I felt was there. Mm-hmm. I usually made it known to the lady who was visiting like, "Hey, uh, you know, we've been talking for this long mm-hmm. and you probably already came over previously and I think I'm really attracted to you. Okay. And if you did come over, I'm going to try to do this." Okay so you you have that conversation before she visits. Yes, I have that Not conversation. Not when she's there. No, no. Bad bad idea when she's there. <laughs> uh, bad idea when she's there. But th- there are cases where it it comes up uh, suddenly, right? So in a si- situation where you probably I mean, this is not really a date but it's visiting, right? So mm-hmm. you you go to the club and you meet people yes. out there. It's kind of spontaneous, right? Okay, so like from the club you take someone home. Yeah. That that's very <laughs> risky area. very very risky that? area. Uh no, not personally, but I I know people who have okay. and I've been in scenarios where maybe there's a group of us who went out and mm-hmm. two or three out of us would come back home with with someone they met. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh has there been a time where a lady invited you to her house? Yes, there. What, what did you think she wanted at the at the point of invitation? So at this point I already knew the lady although we had not got physical yet uh-huh. but from the way she sounded I perceived there was going to be some banshee some uh l- so let's action. say action because <laughs> this was I was really I was much younger this was a, a long time ago oh. right yeah How and, old? uh 17 wow 18 uh-huh. Uh-huh. yeah okay yeah that was in school yeah so of course knowing what could happen uh-huh. I sort of went prepared and we did get like we we made out that day mm-hmm. um and i would say it was expectations on both sides and we were we were both fine okay did you follow through with the making out uh i was really young then so pension <laughs> like you call it I how like old was word. she because now you said you were 17 and that age is is not up to the age of consent legally mm-hmm. so she was about my age as well we we're both two minors same. yeah okay. pretty much okay. i got into school quite early Oh okay. Yeah, okay. So By school you mean university? University, yeah, definitely. No, oh okay. No, yeah. Okay, so the issue of sexual violations and assault has been trending lately yep. in the Nigerian yeah. space. And there's uh, a report that says that majority of these things don't happen um they're not perpetrated by strangers 
they are by people that you know and yeah. a lot of these things happen on home dates you know a guy or a lady will invite someone over with expectations not knowing that the person is not really as in it's just a friendly visit so like why do you think people feel entitled on home dates we know that it happens with ladies but let's address that question from the perspective of a man now so okay. when a guy invites a lady home most of the time why do you think he feels entitled to her body okay um from the perspective of the guys, I'm going to say there are a couple of things working in a guy's head mm -hmm. at some point in their growth and their sexual development, right? There's a bit of peer pressure. You know, you want to brag to, to friends that, oh, this is what happened. Uh, some people do the body count thing. It's, oh, yeah, okay. it's, some people are like that. And then most likely they've not been properly groomed, right? Mm -hmm. How to treat a lady, how yeah. to treat a woman. And so they feel like they can use their position or their power to get one in, in the count right mm -hmm. which is really really bad and then to your original question of managing expectations if you don't set the groundwork before before the, 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 the visiting visit, day yeah. yeah it becomes really tricky because you you get into a scenario where the lady the lady says i didn't expect this from you mm -hmm. and then it's a very awkward s scenario yes. if it's late in the night it gets even more awkward and then the story afterwards is never pretty social media has been you know rife with all these stories it's really sad to see because yes. what we see is a lot of people you know ending up in people's houses and then waking up at night to being pressed and being touched in the wrong yes, places yes it's terrible i mean you know being with a press person for night so yeah, why like there, there was even the story of the lady she's late now blessed memory Tony. um social media carried her news she tweeted about a man who molested her you know at night and before anyone could say jack she was missing and eventually um found dead so i mean that's to buttress your point that it, it really does happen like this is real you know we're not, we're not making it up so i'm going to ask you a question now has there been any time you felt entitled as a man you know like inviting a lady home was there a time you felt entitled like, okay this baby's coming home so ah uh, there's going to be some action has there been a time? Yes, yes, severally. Did you set the ball rolling before then? Because she said it's good to have the conversation before. Did you have that conversation? In most cases, yes. Um, in some cases too, these were visitors who had visited before. Uh -huh. So we had probably done something before, before then. even the visit. Yeah, okay. so this was probably not the first visit. But yeah, there are several times where you might feel like, oh, I have someone coming over. I mean, you, you prepare, you tidy up the place, you maybe prepare dinner. Mm -hmm. You know, you could be romantic too sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, definitely. I, f I felt entitled sometimes. Like, so the times you felt entitled, you said you had the conversation before. And even for those ones, you didn't have the conversation before. There's been some sort of you know we intimacy. already crossed that ground yeah uh, okay okay so now that brings us to the topic of consent do you believe that consent can be implied because now you've talked about having some sort of maybe sexual relationship or whatever it is with someone and then when you invite them home because you've already crossed the ground then there's that expectation that i mean she's not going to make shakara for you how do you think consent should be should, should it be expressed or can it be implied so for every time you are going to punch mm -hmm. <laughs> you there must be consent it, it doesn't matter if it has happened before or whatever the scenario there has to be consent from both parties yeah what, what kind of consent so consent is yes i'm willing to have sex right now and both parties have to be willing to have sex at that time i'm asking this question because you said something you said you've crossed grounds before with some of them so there's that expectation so the fact that you've done it before doesn't necessarily mean that she wants it now exactly which brings us to the next point about perpetual consent initial consent does not equate perpetual consent very right the fact that someone is your girlfriend or the fact that you've punched someone in the past doesn't mean that she's always going to want it when you invite Correct. her to your house True. and now you you said something about the two parties saying yes yeah do you know that you can start making out with someone who's in her feelings or who's in his feelings and somewhere along the line consent is withdrawn exactly yeah tell us some of those things that Good. that guys say they'll be like i know not say this thing they pain like <laughs> <laughs> you know when you get to that point and then a girl is like no you've already off pants you've already said <laughs> pressing some things and she'll be like no no i don't think tell us some of those things that like guys say to justify proceeding without consent in that case um, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I was going to share how to 
be sure you have consent. Okay. Yeah, but I, I, I mean, you do that like every stage yeah. when you kiss. Like, can I kiss you? Should I kiss you? And she's like, yes. Can I touch your breast? And like, yes, you can. Can I remove your pants? Can I go in? Do you do you have to like <laughs> no. obtain consent every step of the way? No, I don't think it's that granular. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're human, right? And we're we're sensitive to our responses. Uh-huh. So if you have kissed before, your initial kiss has to be with consent. You have to make it known. I, like, I, I want, want to, to kiss, kiss you, you, and you need to get that permission. Okay. But if you have kissed before and you're you're probably dating at this point, uh-huh. you might get close and then. You, you get this look language. like, okay, let's do this. And then you start kissing again. Okay, so in essence, now you're supporting implied consent. Implied consent, yes. So you think that's a thing? For kissing and making out. Okay. Implied consent, I think it's fine for kissing and making out because you have crossed the initial consent. Where is implied consent not fine? For so Penetration. Definitely, it's not fine for penetration. So if you do know a bit about the person... Sorry to cut you yeah, short. Yeah, go ahead. So what if this girl just lies on the bed and with her legs wide open? That's not implied consent for penetration now. Is she dead with her legs wide open? <laughs> she's alive. She, like, and then... Uh, maybe she doesn't say come into my garden, but she's like just there lying no, down with her legs open. No, the, You're not going to take that as consent. I don't believe that you just have legs wide open on the bed <laughs> and there's like a sign come into my garden. <laughs> Sex is a... It's a process. Uh-huh. It starts with the making out and then people get warmed up. Okay. And people begin to respond to making out. Okay. So all along the journey of the build up to when you are you get into the garden, uh-huh. you feel that ping back. There's the ping back. The man gets hard and warm. The lady gets soft. But those and warm. are physiological responses. Yes, while making out. So there's there's every opportunity for either party to say, I don't want this to go this far. Uh-huh. I've done that before. And some ladies, I was during my makeout sessions. Uh-huh. Sometimes the ladies give me that feedback that I don't want to go all the way. Okay. Yeah. So you you must get that response before you proceed along this, sta- this stage. Of, yeah, because they have different reasons, right? There was one, uh, we weren't dating at the time. And she's like, I'm not comfortable doing this if we're not in a relationship. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. And at that point, I'm like, okay, do I want to bring out the, would, would you go out with me <laughs> card or do I want to be serious? Yeah. And I, I chose to, be, to, to calm down and say, okay, it's fine. We can stop here. Uh-huh. And then let's consider what, what happens next. Okay. So um, in my opinion, I think that home dates are like really risky. Because you never know, even with someone you trust, the devil can just, <laughs> you know, sometimes they say leave the devil out of this, but even if you trust someone, things still happen with people that, that you trust. I remember a time when I was in school, those those were shenanigans like, mom, like if you're listening, <laughs> but <laughs> on one of those days, like I left school and um, I visited this guy. I was supposed to stay the weekend. <laughs> and the reason I went was because he looked like a Christian. You know, we were before then, we always talk about the Bible, we share Bible passages, we pray and all. So I felt like, oh, this is a man of God. So I visited him and. I hope I don't get links <laughs> for this, but they are the worst. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like he. I could not believe my eyes that night. And you know the worst thing? I was so scared because I felt if anything happened, the blame would definitely go to me. Because the, the question is going to be, what were you doing in his house? That's that's going to be the first thing. Like, yeah. you're, you're a student. You're supposed to be in school. And that's what Weekends we're talking about. Are okay, risky. Very risky. <laughs> Weekends are risky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, so I'm visiting you. So what? The fact that I'm visiting you does not give you the liberty, you know, to put hands on me. If I can ask you, did you make out? No. You had no intentions of making out. I had none. I, like for a we whole were weekend. Christians. <laughs> we were praying and we were discussing Bible passages and all. So I felt like this is just an opportunity for me to get to know him better. <laughs> I mean, I was young, I was naive, but okay. like now yeah. I know better. True. You know, I will True. not go to a man's house you to spend a weekend like that. You shouldn't. Exactly. So I mean, I know, but then that was that, that was my expectation. But he he was older. He was in his thirties. So I don't even want to go into details because like I almost cried that night. You know, because I was scared, yeah. not necessarily of what he was doing or trying to do, but because who will I tell if something happens? So we're going to close on this note. What do you do if a violation occurs or there's an attempted assault, like sexual assault or something on you? Do you have any advice for guys, um, for, for girls, yeah. what to do if, if something like that happens? Okay, so my, my first tip would be to avoid the scenario completely. By not can. visiting? By not visiting when you are not sure of who you are going to visit. I mean, at that time I was sure. I felt I was. <laughs> it's, so if you must visit, you could do it in daylight hours. Mm. 
okay. so that's that's like your backup plan your escape plan you don't you don't visit when all the taxis have stopped moving and you don't have your own transport fare you don't have your way out yeah. so you must always plan for the worst yeah, i yeah. think this thing you said about um, transport has made me remember something Amara, she's supposed to like be here, but physically she cannot be here. She's in Texas, but she sent in her audio. And I think that her audio tip is very useful as in what to do if someone tries stuff. We're going to listen to it briefly. I had this male friend I was really familiar with. One day he called me and asked if I could come by his house to go through some documents for him. So I agreed. And then I got there that day, even though it was my first time going to his house. And then he opened his laptop. We went through the documents together. I made my input. And then I went to sit down on the chair opposite him. It was a three-seater. So I sat at the extreme end, opened my laptop, and was trying to use his internet. So he left where he was sitting and came and sat right beside me. And then um, started coming closer and closer and closer until there was no more space left between us. And this time he brought out his hand and just placed it on my lap. I took it away and then he brought it back. So I told him to stop. What are you trying to do? So this time around, he brought it back. It was so tight and he was trying to make way into my skirt, you know, trying to lift my tight. I fought him off and then he placed his hand back, forced me down on the chair and was trying to get on top of me. I kept struggling. I kept fighting and then I took deep breaths. You know, I was so scared. Uh, my hands were trembling. My legs were shaking. All I just said was, please let me use the restroom. And he was like, okay. So when I was going to use the restroom, I picked my phone with me. As I sat in the restroom, I ordered Uber. And thank God, it was just a few minutes away. Not long after that, the Uber came and started pumping his horns. Then the gate man in this building just came out and came straight to the door and started knocking and was knocking. So this guy came out and opened the door. I immediately came out of the restroom and the man asked if anyone had ordered Uber. I said I was the one. So I just went, picked my bag and then left. Okay, so um, from that uh, audio, I think she did something really smart. She was like, can I use the restroom? I, I don't even think all guys would let her go. Like, if it's a guy who's bent on doing what's going to do, that restroom excuse will not fly. But I mean, you should try. If you're in that kind of situation, see how you can temporarily get away from the abuser, yeah. you know, and um, see if you can order an Uber like Ami did. And then just keep your fingers crossed or call someone because she, yeah. she reached for her phone when she was going to the restroom. So you can quickly think of an emergency number, someone you trust that can come get you out of the situation. Uh, what do you think? I think it was a good idea. Like she was really lucky to have saved herself there. I think it's also good to try to find a public space or to shout if you're in a place where you their neighbors around yeah, yeah if you can make some noise and drag the attention of everyone in the compound or yeah. something that can also help i also think if the worst happens god forbid we don't pray for that scenario but if the worst happens i think it's okay to immediately go and take up the case so that you can get some justice right because a lot of these abusers uh revel in the fact that their victims don't speak up yeah yeah so you should not feel ashamed because you went to uh, the abuser's house yeah. it's it's a crime the abuser is an abuser and you are a victim yes. yes you shouldn't blame yourself you should just try to get justice because when you do that you protect the next victim yeah okay thank you very much kenny for um the insights that you've brought what i'm going to say is that a person is visiting you be it a lady or a guy does not mean anything don't put True. your hands on anyone without consent. Now, initial consent is not perpetual. That you've slept with someone before or that you guys started making out does not mean that you have to see it to the end. At any point that a lady or a man withdraws consent, you need That's to respect it. that. Now, physiological responses are not consent. That a guy's dick stands up or that a lady's nipples harden or whatever it is does not mean she wants it. Those are responses that are sometimes beyond our yeah. control. Yeah. So the body is saying one thing but the mind is saying what he's saying and it's yeah. no yeah. and no means no again the blame game needs to stop ladies and gentlemen the first question to ask a victim is not what were you doing in his house or what were no. you doing in her house what were you doing if you catch yourself thinking that way you need to stop yourself in the process because that's wrong that's wrong thinking that a person visits does not mean anything on that note uh i'm going to bring this episode to an end thank you kenny for being on this episode i really appreciate the sacrifice you're welcome my pleasure <laughs>
Thank you for listening to this episode of Young in Love. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, if you did, you can rate us and write a review on Apple and Google Podcasts. Feel free to like our social media pages on Facebook and Instagram at Young in Love underscore podcast. Share this podcast with your family and friends. Subscribe to Young in Love podcast on Apple and Google Podcasts and Core Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. If you'd like to support Young in Love podcast, you can do this on our Patreon account by visiting patreon.com slash young in love and making a small monthly donation of as little as one dollar every month or 350 naira monthly or even bigger donations as you feel led to but hey if you cannot make any donations that's fine too because besides just money young in love podcast has thrived and will continue to thrive on the prayers and good wishes of good people like you until the next episode bye and be good young in love